and the current title holder gouges at the eyes of the challenger. Mad Dog Joe to curse him. Slams a forearm to the throat. And tosses him over the top rope. He's going after him. Fans are scattering. Oh, no. Star pressure crashes the chair on the Mad Dog. and she's working on JJJ's head, and the ref doesn't know what's up and down. Bad Dog is caught. He's caught between the ropes. Skull Crusher ricochets from rope to rope now and launches a flying tackle at Mad Dog. But Mad Dog was playing possum. Oh, my God, I can't believe this is happening. This is the worst catastrophe in the history of professional wrestling. JJJ! You're the champ, so Crusher Johnson's manager. What do you think about the possibility that he may lose his title? Look, with all due regard to the commissioner, it is my opinion and the opinion of the fans that Skull Crusher Johnson is still the champion. Mad Dog Joe DeCurso was disqualified for the brutal decapitation of the champion, Skull Crusher Johnson. After being released from jail, Mad Dog sank into a deep depression. A depression so deep and binding that all attempts to draw him out failed. Mad Dog Joe was last spotted standing in a breadline at the Mission Mission in San Francisco. Out of work, out of worth. He reportedly ended it all by leaping to his death from the Oakland Bay Bridge in 1979. Mad Dog Joe DeCurso. Unusual, mysterious, the baddest of the bad. Or was he? Hi, I'm Leslie Uggams. No, not the Leslie Uggams. I'm a director. But my passion has always been for wrestling. Ever since when I was a young child and walked into my parents' bedroom and my father said to me, get out of here, we're wrestling. Frankly, I've been fascinated by it. But since I'm clumsy and bruise easily, I found I couldn't wrestle. But I could direct. There are three or four basic treatments used for tattoo removal. Cryotherapy, where we freeze the dyed tissue and hope that when the replacement skin grows back, the tattoo doesn't come back with it. Uh, the Variot method of chemical removal, where we rub tannic acid into the tattooed area, and then using uh, silver nitrate sticks, we burn away the upper epidermal layers. Is there scarring? Yes, there's always scarring. Some of the Eastern Bloc countries are experimenting with entire arm transplants for tattoo removal. The entire arm is removed and a donor arm is sewn in place. Are there any complications? Yes, but relatively minor. Uh, changes in sleeve length, ring size, fingerprint configuration, arm hair, things like that. Uh, but hey, no scarring. This illustration describes this whole idea of like we really worship at the temple of creativity and that it's very elusive and temperamental. And then when you finally get it and it disappears, it can be the most tormenting, soul-searching thing that can happen to you, the sense of loss and the sense of just, I'll never be able to do it again. And you just have to give up you know, and take a break. And this is generally when the spark of intuition comes, but it only happens after you've built up this huge dam and reservoir of information and you've given up and you're drinking a cup of coffee or walking across town or opening the car door and then it happens. And you get, then you get the, the Zen activation of imagination. And that's when the unintended accident happens. That's when you're in the zone the images appear before you on the page. You become one with the work. You know, you activate the Vismo. The ray of creativity is happening, and it's the realization of the whole element of the process. But then, you know, if you get to that point and none of this is happening, just go back to your first idea and do that one, because that's that that generally is the best idea. And the fact that they cut to these points of view where you see this endless staircase from the mice's point of view, it just makes it an incredible obstacle that has to be surmounted. And an audience just gets bent out of yeah. shape when, when they yeah. finally make it there and the cat yeah. covers them up. The audience goes, yeah. ah!
thanks for doing this interview. I appreciate your change in attitude towards the media. You're welcome. We do exactly as we want when it comes to the media. The mass is ready to show the world that he's not flash in the pan. Tonight, he will be wrestling the fourth wonder of the world, the Great Pyramid. <laughs> it's a terrific fighting machine with a strength of fourth behemoths. What? Behemoths. Behemoths. Yes, behemoths. You talked, didn't you? Is this Mad Dog Joe DiCurso? Who told you to ask me that question? Nobody. I make up my own questions. Don't never ask me that question again. Never! Ow! I don't want to put it like this is a terrible neighborhood, like it's crazy, but there's people out here that's struggling, and they see you, they be like, man, let's get this man. He probably got some bread on him. Where that, where that pistol at? Let's go get him, see what he about, you know, see what he got with him. And they won't hesitate out here. Since you've been in D.C., what, were your, what was the major concerns that you've seen? I see violence. And I see a lot of, a lot of anger. It's, it's, it's rough because it's the belly of the beast, the heart of it. I have never yet to see an activity in the hood and it ain't go smoothly. There's always something happening. That ain't good. You can't even hang out without something happening nowadays. People get killed at a young age. Mother saying that child at a young age in a coffin. Why put your life on the line for a, a street or a block? or a couple friends who want to make some few quick dollars. That's going to end up life in, life in jail. People dying uh, because what life people say. People dying because you stepped on the shoe. You looked at them wrong. People you look at dying, a girlfriend. You look at what is going on, man. I mean, this world is messed up. Yeah. Every day we come up with the thing, this is a messed up world we live in. WTIA 50,000 Watts of Goodwill invites you to join us in asking the man upstairs to smile on us today and help us to satisfy that hankering to offer you the best in radio entertainment and service to the finest people in the world, our listeners. <laughs> I just heard at the time of a new radio station called WDIA, first all-black operated station in the country. Now, darling. So I went over there. I knocked on the door and I noticed the red light wasn't on. And he said, what can I do for you, young fella? I said, I want to make a record and go on the radio. So they came to the door and let me in and said, well, we don't make records, but you probably could go on the radio. Uh, we have a new product we're starting called Peptikon. So I came up with it. Peptikon show is good. Peptikon show is good. Peptikon show is good. You get it anywhere in your neighborhood. <laughs> so that was my first trying to write a jingle. But it went well. And people bought Peptikon like it wasn't going to be anymore. And I didn't find out until about 10 or 15 years ago why? Because the older people bought it. It was 12% uh, alcohol. <laughs> and with love, love to be with you. Hey, she got to be more aggressive. This is Lola's gym. She has a team of girls who wrestles. Killer Tomato and Ace. Regular foxes. Been doing it ever since Joe disappeared. Come on in and talk to her. What are you people doing here? Uh, we, please, Lolo, we'd like to ask you a couple of questions about Joe. Get out of here. We're, make, we're not reporters. We're making a documentary about Joe's Get life. Get out of here. And I'd just like to ask you one question, please. Now, remember, Leslie, this is a woman. I know. We, the gentle approach works best. We, we screwed up. We shouldn't have gone to her job anyway, I and mean, that was a bad idea. That was yesterday. This is, better, right? this is now. I'll be cool. Be in the moment. The flowers are great. Come in. Honey, get up here. Good morning, Lola. 